Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm doing a review of SEMrush. SEMrush is my new favorite keyword research and domain analytics tool. I have recently canceled my HRF subscription after almost three years. You can see it's expiring in about 11 days. I'm switching over to use SEMrush and in this video, I'm going to explain exactly why I'm starting to prefer SEMrush over HRFs. If you want to make money online, and if you want to have, let's say, a niche blog or a niche website or an e-com store or even a YouTube channel, then it's very important to make sure that you're producing your content on keywords that, first of all, have a good search volume. And secondly, you also have a realistic chance of ranking for. So SEMrush is a tool that actually helps you achieve all of those goals. It's sort of an all-in-one solution that has got a lot of detail and a lot of detailed tools in it. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how I've been using SEMrush in my business to find amazing keywords, uh, to research my competitors, to analyze my own domain and how you can do the same, how SEMrush essentially is going to help you increase your rankings, find more profitable keywords and rank for those keywords as well. And if you want to follow along with my tutorial as you're watching this video, I've actually got a 14 day free trial exclusive link. So this is something that's been offered to me a uh, standard free trial is seven days, but if you want to grab a 14 day free trial, you can do that from the description below. And that way you can follow along and do sort of what I'm doing as I'm working through this video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Greg Kononenko. I publish regular videos and case studies on search engine optimization, traffic generation and blogging. So click subscribe just below to stay up to date. So who is SEMrush for? Well, SEMrush can help you if you have a blog, if you have a niche website, if you do any kind of content marketing, it, it can help you find some excellent content ideas, keyword ideas. It can help you also analyze your own domain as well as competitors' domains to find some opportunities to get more traffic, to find some additional keywords and to actually rank for those keywords as well. It can do a lot of things. And unfortunately, as much as I would love to cover everything in one video, there's just too much uh, information to cover. So in this video, I'm going to focus on how um, I personally use it mostly in my business. So from a perspective of a blogger or a niche website owner, I'm gonna show you how I research competitors, how I reverse engineer their rankings and their keywords and how I find excellent keywords and how I rank for those keywords. This website here, travelcroc.com is one of five different websites that I own. And this is a website which I sometimes use for public case studies. I don't mind giving away some of the keywords and some of the information about it. And let's now talk about, as me, as the owner of travelcroc.com, how could I use this domain overview and domain analysis tool? So I actually love to sort of spy or reverse engineer some of the stuff that my competitors are doing. And generally I find a competitor who has roughly the same domain authority as mine, or at least, you know, they're not a large corporate website. So this website here, ourscapeclause.com, is run by a couple of people, Kate and Jeremy Storm. So it's not a huge corporate website. And this is something that I like to do. I like to pick a similar uh, kind of website, which is, you know, it's it does, hasn't had millions and millions invested into it essentially. So we can take this website and we can go over here into domain overview. Then we can type that in here and we can click search to reveal some of the useful information about this website. So this is telling me that this website is currently ranking for 83,000 different keywords. I can also see their authority score and their SEMrush domain kind of ranking, which I'll get to a little bit later on in this video. I can also see the information about their backlinks. Now, what I like to do is I like to go straight into here, click on these 83,000 keywords, and that will give me all of the keywords that it's currently ranking for. So on the US Google, so I can switch between uh, the rankings on US Google, UK Google, uh, Canada Google, etc. We're now currently in the US Google database. And from here, I can see here are all of the keywords that they're currently ranking for. And I then like to go and apply these advanced filters. So advanced filters can help me find those gems that I can publish content on, on my website to also get some of the rankings that uh, this uh, website is currently enjoying. So here I generally go include and I go keyword difficulty and I make keyword difficulty less than 70. I find if I choose keyword difficulty of 65 or 70, then generally even with a pretty much brand new website, I have a good chance of ranking my content. The less the better, but 
the way that the cutoff works is kind of like around 60, 65, 70 is, is the maximum that you probably want to go for when your website is brand new. So let's click apply and you can now see that I've got 12,300 different keywords. I can then further refine this list by including another. So if we go add condition include and another filter that I really like is word count. So I want word count greater than four. So any kind of keywords that have got five or more words in a key phrase. So these are the so-called long tail keywords. And if we click apply, we can see that now we get uh, six and a half thousand keywords, okay? And generally keywords that are sort of longer that I've got five, six or seven keywords in them, there's less competition for them. So it's just a lot simpler to rank for them. So we've now got this list of keywords. Uh, it's excellent, six and a half thousand. I can further tighten up the filters. For example, I can go keyword difficulty less than 64 and word count greater than five. Okay, so this is going to give us even easier keywords that this website is currently ranking for. And because I know that this is a mom and dad sort of website, it's not a corporate website, if they're ranking for it, then I probably can as well. So now we've got a list of 915 keywords, but these are of course a lot easier than even the previous list that we saw. So now if I look at any of these keywords, you can see that they're long and they are the types of keywords that I love to publish my articles on. For example, what to do in Bologna in one day. Okay, there's a lot of people that are gonna be searching for this and we can now actually take a look at what kind of competition, actual competition this keyword has. So let's say we open this up in a new tab. Oh, by the way, guys, don't worry about the volume too much. You can see that the volumes are appearing quite low, like 40, 50, 70, 90, etc. But I have found time and time again that if I go for keywords that only have 50 or 100 searches, they can still bring in significant traffic. I've actually got some articles that are bringing in 50 or 100 visitors a day, even though I targeted a keyword with low search volume under 100 searches a month. And how does this work? Well, once you rank for something like what to see in Krakow in two days, your website is, is going to rank or your article is going to rank for dozens, potentially even hundreds of keyword variations. Okay, so once you rank for this keyword, you're, you're also going to rank for some related keywords as well. So don't worry about volume too much. The main thing is to actually identify the keywords for which you can rank and grab those first page rankings. Now, if we analyze this keyword a bit more, so we open that up, what to do in Bologna in one day, we can scroll down to this feature here called SERP analysis. I really love this feature. I use it a lot. If we grab these metrics, you can see now that we've got page AS, ref domains and backlinks. So this is generally what I look at the most. And page AS is page authority score. So um, this is a really good metric because I found that if I can see at least, you know, two, three, four websites that have got page AS of zero, this indicates to me that um, the, this website, you know, doesn't, or this page doesn't have a lot of authority in Google's eyes. So this is definitely something that I can uh, try and compete with even with a brand new website. Now, um, the other two things, this referring domains and backlinks. So this just sort of tells you how many different websites online are linking to this website and backlinks is telling you how many backlinks this particular page on each of these websites currently has. Um, and page authority score takes all of that into consideration. So it's basically telling you that if it's zero, then you also have a really good chance of ranking on page one. So here, what I can see is that there are a lot of pages that have zero, zero, zero in them. For example, look at this one, myvacationitineraries.com or tripadvisor.com has got just a very simple page probably with no text on it. So this is very powerful. And just at a glance like this, I can tell whether I've got a decent chance of ranking on page one or not. There's a bunch of other data that you can see here under competitive research which I won't go into now, like position changes, competitors, pages, subdomains, etc. But what I do want to touch on is this feature called Keyword Gap. So Keyword Gap allows you to check the, uh, the keywords that your site is currently ranking for and then include some competitors and then get some cool insights out of it. So let's do this together. Under where it says you, so here in the first one, what I want to do is just include my blog. So we've entered my blog, travelcroc.com, and then root domain of our competitor. You can then add up to four competitors, so five websites total, and then you can compare them. So this is going to tell you currently uh, which keywords are shared keywords, missing keywords, weak, strong, etc. And this is really cool because, and I haven't seen this in any other tool, uh, I can see that for 141 different keywords, my website, which is travelcroc.com and ourescapeclause.com are both competing for and which positions we currently have. So for example, places to visit in May 
I'm currently ranking at uh, number 28 and our escape clause is currently ranking at number 56, position 56. So uh, my results are highlighted in green. And then for some others, theirs are highlighted in green because they are outranking me. All right, so this is some insights that I can get. The other, uh, the other tab here is missing. So missing means that I am currently not ranking for them, but this is an opportunity for me because the competitors that I've entered up here at the top, our escape.com, they are currently ranking for this and I can see exactly, exactly which position they're currently ranking for. And once again, if you choose your competing websites properly, so they have roughly the same domain authority as your website, this is very important information because it means if they are ranking for this keyword, then you should strongly consider creating some content on this keyword as well. If they're ranking, then there is no reason why you also can't rank provided your domain authority is about the same. And once again, you can apply filters to all of these results. So I can go into advanced filters. And for example, I just want to see anything that's got very low keyword difficulty of just 65. So we can apply that and that'll filter the results below. The other gap feature that I really like is backlink gaps. So we've already got our websites entered in here. So travel croc and our escape clause. But what this can tell me is what kind of backlinks my competitors currently have that I can also try to get. So I can see that there is a backlink that my competitor ourescapeclose.com has got and it's coming from github.io and authority score of this page is 89 so it's really high and if I click on this one up here this will open up the information about these backlink I can see the exact URL from which they've got the link so I can sort of analyze whether I can somehow do the same thing and get a link from the same spot so I can see that looks like uh, someone potentially at ourescapeclause.com have created this page here, Bell Ajabahasa at github.io. So I can try to figure out, can I somehow create a subdomain or sort of like a sub website on github.io and grab a link just like these guys have done because, you know, it's showing me all the opportunities that I can use to build links to my website. The second feature that I really enjoy within SEMrush is its keyword magic tool. So I can go into keyword magic tool and then I can enter any kind of keyword here at the top. So for example, I might type in something like Hawaii. Maybe I'm considering researching some uh, keywords around Hawaii. Okay, and we click that and uh, that's going to give us all of the keywords that have currently got Hawaii in it. So we can see there is 1.4 million different keywords in the database that have got Hawaii in them. And once again, I can apply my filters here. So for example, I can go and say for keyword difficulty, see they're even giving you uh, ranges such as easy, possible, hard, and very hard. So we can choose, for example, here we go custom range up to let's say 55. Okay, so that's super easy keywords that even a newbie website can rank for. We can click apply. And then I can add some additional filters such as word count of five or more. So really the long tail phrases and we can hit apply and that's going to give us, well, we're actually getting 668,000 keywords. So you can review all of the results here. For example, this one here, hunting in Hawaii, big island. That seems like a really great keyword, volume 140, which is more than enough for me. I generally write content on anything that's got 30 or 40 searches per month or more. Okay, keyword difficulty 54, so this is going to be fairly easy to rank for. And I can open this up in a new tab again, and we can go back to uh, the same tab that we looked at earlier, which is this one here, SERP analysis. So you can review the top 10 front page results and then uh, take a look whether there is authority score of zero, as well as referring domains and backlinks of zero on any of them. And I can actually see here, there are two results. So this one here, Gary Luce Outdoors and TripAdvisor.com, which I can most likely quite easily outrank if I just write a high quality article on this keyword. There are a lot of other features that SEMrush has that I won't go into in this video because this is not meant to be an exhaustive video on all of the SEMrush features. Like I said, I just want to focus on the features that I probably have been using the most in SEMrush, but they do also have a really cool link building module that will allow you to uh, get prospects for your link building efforts if you're looking to promote your website and acquire a few backlinks It's making it a lot easier. So I've been uh, working with that as well I found that quite useful. There are also full modules for local SEO advertising and social media and on some plans uh, So some of the higher plans you've also got content marketing modules that are attached to SEMrush as well
If you guys want any tutorials in the future on SEMrush or any of the other features, just let me know in the comments below. I can record some additional videos for how to use the different modules in a bit more detail. What I do want to touch on in this video though is pricing. So SEMrush really has probably got just one other main competitor and that is HREF. So that's the company or the service that I was using up until recently and I'm going to compare the pricing between the two. So Ahrefs currently is offering their cheapest plan at $99 per month and they also have a $7 trial for seven days. So there is no free trial and it's $99 the cheapest plan. Now SEM Rush offers slightly different pricing. So their cheapest plan currently is $119.95 per month if you pay monthly. Uh, annual cost reduces it to about 99 per month if you pay annually for the whole year in advance. So it, it is $20 a month more expensive, but they do have a free trial. Okay, first of all, there is a free trial. So if you uh, go onto SEMrush website and you scroll all the way to the bottom, you will see that there is a seven day free trial, seven days free access. But uh, as I was mentioning at the start of this video, I actually have a special offer where you can get a 14 day free trial if you sign up through my link, which is just below in the description under this video, uh, they have offered this special deal to the viewers of the Caffeinated Blogger YouTube channel. And that I think is a really good deal because in 14 days, you can get a really good flavor of exactly what this tool can do, whether it will work for you or not. And in regards to the pricing, 119 versus 99, of course, $20 a month, you know, is a significant difference. But as I have shown earlier on in this video, uh, SEM Rush actually has a lot more features. So if you're serious about your website, I think SEM Rush kind of provides, um, you know, just a few more tools. And with this 14 day free trial, you're basically going to be saving uh, about half a month's worth of usage of SEM Rush. So that's about 60 bucks, right? So that makes it a little bit easier to compensate for, for that sort of difference between the two monthly plan prices. Thank you so much for watching. I've got two more videos that will help you improve your SEO. So just go ahead and watch them here from the screen above. And if you're not yet a subscriber, then click subscribe just below this video to stay up to date on my future tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.